We've stepped off and out of the last hundred years of what God has been doing to prepare even the church and the body of Christ for what we're stepping into right now. It's the most exciting time to be alive. And yet, it, you know, it was like the, 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 the story goes. It was the best of times. It was the worst of times. It was the best of times. And it just really depends on who you're going to walk with and who's going to shepherd you today. And if you're going to step up and step out, I want you to welcome my guest, a good friend of mine. Welcome, Terry Bailey. Well, thank you, Kelly. It's a pleasure to be here, an honor. Well, I'm so proud of you. Oh, well, I'm so proud of you. And one of the things that you said, because I was looking at words, uh, you said encourage. You think about the word in trust. And what that is, is bringing courage, yeah. bringing trust. And if we're really operating in the word, because that's what the word does, wherever we go, we're bringing hope, we're bringing courage, we're bringing life. So it's really important nowadays to identify words and the spirits that are bringing them. Yes. And to make sure there's some you shut down and some that we amplify. Yes. Correct? Well, and as, as, as women of God, we like to encourage people. But now it's time for a new kind of strength, a new kind. I mean, it's not new to God. It's just, let me say it this way, a deeper. From and a the deeper voices place. that we lift up and amplify are, and it may be an unusual voice. It may be who you least expect. I know, you know, as somebody that's been divorced, people look at me and sometimes they think, or maybe you, you've been divorced. Only twice. Oh, well, I got you beat on that one. <laughs> Or you got me beat. I don't know which way it works. <laughs> no, but there is, um, the world says we have nothing to say because of the failure. You failed. But you know what? When your life seems to fail, but you're opened up to God, that's not failure. But in your weakness, his power came in and changed things. I have no regrets. Oh, I don't either. Here is the thing. We operated, some people, okay, let's be just really frank. Some people just sleep with a lot of people. <laughs> we true. got married. We took a risk, and there is only one Jesus, and Jesus is the only one that never fails, mm -hmm. okay? So the problem a lot of times within the church and why we don't have younger people in the church and active is because we try to portray that we ourselves of ourselves right. are so perfect. You know, Jean and I taught a marriage class and Jean was divorced once too. And the, what we said is we know what not to do. Right. Okay. Some of us learn differently. I can be the best marriage counselor. <laughs> and, and you know, sometimes, but those, Jean's dad would always say those are the the bought lessons are the best lessons. Yes, the you, expensive ones. Yes, and you don't forget them. And that's sometimes why our children don't understand us and how vehement we can be about don't do this because we know what doesn't work. Right. Right? And so, yeah, both of us have, have been through a lot as far as divorce, and divorce can be absolutely traumatic and devastating. As can a lot of other things in life. But God. But God, and see, that's the thing is, is when opposition happens to you, okay, unless you're living under a terror, in a terrarium, okay, nowadays especially, you are going to face opposition and you're going to face failure. Your job is, if God is real, and we know he is, with his help, how can I demonstrate to the world even when I fail or even when circumstances fail that aren't perfect, that subject me to junk that shouldn't have happened? How quick using the word of God and with his presence can I get back up and go at it again? And whatever he tried to take me out with, I'm going to use as my sword and my weapon exactly. to attack the enemy and his kingdom. So you could, he, maybe he's messed with me, 
but I'm stronger and more courageous because of it. And people go, well, I'm called to marriage and family. Why am I being attacked like that? Because you're called to marriage and family. That's where Satan hits. Well, that's almost so a clue. So at your very calling. Yeah. And then on the other side of the work, walk with Jesus. And we've used the word journey a lot this season. On the other side of this journey, he's taking you on from your pain to, to his gain, really. Yeah. Um, there's a, not just a lot of healing, but what you are called to carry is born in that moment, born in that time. And, you know, Terry, uh, I was thinking about our what we're going to talk about. And just as we started the show, I had this, this scripture pop in my mind. And, you know, we are in a time, like I said, we're in a time like no other. But part of that is because we're in a cleansing like no other. You know, how we used to mix my abilities with God's abilities and how we used to walk with him, anointing our thing that we wanted to do or we felt like we were supposed to do. He just walked along so graciously with us in that for a while. But it's time we need to get on his page. And there's a scripture that popped in my mind. It, it says, um, if you tire in a race with mere men, how can you run with the horses? So God is removing the baggage that we've walked this little race that's been very natural, very tied to the earth, very uh, with the elements of supernatural in the walk we've had. Okay. But we're, kind of, we're in a new day where it's time to run with the horses. It's time to run with power and majesty and spirit speed and courage and just purpose purpose, purpose. <laughs> we're, we're we are winning yes and so that's what we have to remember and my, it's funny because my dad used to call me a racehorse that's i funny. would be because i would go full blast and then need to back off but we as women are called to be stronger yeah okay trauma let's face it um, happens to everybody at this at this stage, but God, yeah. and He shows up. And some reason, Kelly, He thought, you know, those two, <laughs> they can handle it. This time, they're going to stick with me. They're going to stick with me, and no matter what, He knew what was coming, and He trained us. And they will use the bad. They will turn the bad and use it for my purpose and my good. And that thing about, you know, I did it my way. We're over that. Yeah. Oh, I don't want my way anymore. Well, it's it's time consuming, but you you really need if you want to have, walk in the blessing that you say you do. So many people say, "Oh Lord, use me for ministry." You know what? We got to be careful what we say it That's right. because we're being used, and we're being used because we're so willing. We've had some of the roughest assignments <laughs> on the planet. We really, really have. And so, but God did trust us. And if you're out there, God trusted you to be born this time for a special purpose. And I don't care if you're six or I say this all the time or 106, you have your voice, you have your encouragement you can give using the word of God. There's, you have a tool, you have a gift God's birthed you for this time. You know, Terry, I skirted along in life for like 50 years. Without You're that old, Kelly? Oh, plus. Oh, my gosh. Plus. I identify as 18. <laughs> Try it. <laughs> well, my former years, God just let, he never really, and I, I don't think it was about me. I just think it's a part of the times that we live in. And he let me just not do a super amount of inside looking at me. I could look at you. I could say, oh, you need to walk in faith. You need to do this. You need to do that. I could look at my children and want to, I love my children, but so much of my mothering was no. controlling. And it was, um, I really didn't want them to fall. I, and, and I don't mean so much sin. I just did not want them to have hurt. And I didn't want them to walk through what I had. And one day the Lord said, uh, when did you meet me the most? I'm like, when I messed up <laughs> and he goes, let them, let them meet me. And, and he's refined what even being a mother is about. It's not about control. 
but he had to heal me first. And in this uh, last 10 years where I was in pain, he would not let me make it about anybody else but cleansing Kelly. Yeah. He just, I want to talk about this person. He's like, let's talk about Kelly. I want to talk, I'm look at what they're doing. Well, let's talk about what you're doing. And it wasn't to get to shame me, it was to free me. Right. So that we could be the kind of mama bears. I love what you say about mama <laughs> bears. And all the things that God is doing in you is because you let him change you. He's able to do what he's doing today. Well, and that's really, really important. We all have got to know that we're not Jesus. Mm -hmm. Okay, we don't have all the answers. And we can study the word, word till we become part of the pages and our tears are drenched in it, but we're still not Jesus. Okay, he made us so that we need a relationship with him. He came for a relationship with him because he just wants us to hang out with him. He wants us all day long to go, you know, I think this one's too big for Terry. Jesus, <laughs> could you please help me? And he always Can does. Can you get me out of bed? <laughs> Can you get, oh, uh, yeah, very much so. So simple. Yes, I, yeah. Jesus, where's my phone? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Jesus, I'm going to be late. Can you help me get that dog in the house? You know what I'm saying? It, to you... Jesus, I don't know what to wear. I know it's dumb, but I need some help. You know, he wants to have, and that's one thing, we both work together in Super Kids. I've known Kelly, even though I identify as 18, <laughs> almost 30 years, okay? And what we need to do is we need to tell people, we, we tried to be, well, you know, I went to this Bible college. You know, and I studied this for years, and I have this title. Okay. No, we, we don't need to do that. We don't need, we, what we want to do is say, you know what? Talking to God, praying is talking to God. Yeah. He talks your language. He relates and communicates you. He's a good teacher because bad teachers say like, you need to learn my way. Jesus goes, okay, you're not going to get it unless I talk like this or show you this flower over here or that horse over there. That's how you're going to get it. And he talks your language to you. But we got to remember, Jesus wants to talk to us all day long. And we need to make it simple for people to get to Jesus. Because I guarantee you. Instead of being an obstruction. An obstruction. <laughs> he's trying to get people in, not keep people out. If you just don't have read 50 chapters a day and have memorized the New Testament, then you are not, you're not walking in faith. And do you know, if you just had more faith, you wouldn't have problems. That's a bunch of baloney. It is a bunch. We've made up a lot of stuff to go along with the truth. And then we wonder why kids don't want to be close to God. Well, what's the benefit? We know the benefit. Because we're not trying to get them close to God in the past. We want, we think they just need to be close to just us. Just listen to us. We give all the answers. Oh, I'm so sorry, Lord. I know. I'm so sorry. I know, because it's all about him, not all about us. It's, it's ugly. Gross. It's, it's getting ugly. grosser to me. You know what it kind of reminds you of, which we really, really, this would be a sign that we're having a revival, the drag queens. Okay. We love the drag queens. It would be wonderful if we had them in church. But I'm going to tell you the truth. When they put on the wig and the makeup and the high heels, the stilettos, it's kind of ugly. It's not what they want it to be. And so when we try to make it about us, we're kind of putting on those heels, those wigs, the caking on the makeup, and we're not being genuine. We're not being who we're really supposed to be, which is in relationship with him constantly, yeah. like Abraham was. Where do you want me to go today? Who do you want me to talk to? Right? Did you ever, I mean, once God wiped off all your outer performance things, and he said, like, okay, she's took ready. a long time. <laughs> me too. Um, <laughs> but actually, no. It, like, once it started, it was like, very not hard. Like, yeah. he's like, okay, that, let's get rid of that. Like, Revelation, let's talk about that. I put this in you. I put this in you, but not that. Let's talk about that. He said that to the seven churches. I love this about you. I love this about you, Faith <laughs> Church, Thyatira. What? But that's the one I really look at. Yeah. And, that, and I, you could say, well, you shouldn't go around judging people out here. I'm like, oh, no. 
I, Kelly was looking at Kelly with the Lord Jesus' help, and I was going, wait. It's this message to the faith church is, I love you. You're, you're so awesome, but you tolerate that woman Jezebel. You tolerate the Jezebel spirit. And that is abhorrent. And that is a place where I, I personally think anyone that identifies as word of faith or feels like they've really studied and grounded them, yeah. God's grounded you in the message of faith, you should probably go to him and say, am I? Lord, but come in. Where am I? Because you may be operating it. You may be controlling people in it, but you may just be tolerating that happening around you and putting up with it because you don't want to fight with that spirit and you don't realize it, but you're doing exactly what Jesus said we had to get rid of. So tell me, Kelly. Now that I've opened that can of worms. No. <laughs> and, and, well, I'm, I'm going to do a Gene Bailey on you, so I'm going to ask you a question. <laughs> whoa, 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 whoa. That is not our contract. <laughs> okay. So tell me, you said if you're a word of faith, you should take a look at yourself because what is it about the word of faith that has a tendency to make you want to, to promote that spirit, what do you think? Okay, thank you, Lori, that I have an answer for this. <laughs> I know you do. <laughs> um, I do, because that spirit, and I had to study the spirit because yeah. I, I came, I began to realize that in my woundedness, I had a place of trauma, and God talk, took me all the way back to where I was three when he began to heal me from abandonment. But that place of abandonment was the perfect hook place for that spirit to begin to operate in my life, to begin to want to control people, to need everything out here to be just right so that I feel secure and that no one's going to abandon me. Because I mean, all this is happening so subconsciously. I didn't know it. I didn't know. I have a gift of hospitality. But that gift was being controlled by that spirit because I'm like being hospitable to you so you won't leave. Yeah. Only God can show you those things. And so it's the woundedness that opens the door to that spirit, trauma, early trauma. Mm -hmm. I, I heard John Paul Jackson, again, I had to research the people that were ministering against that spirit, ministering truth about. So I heard John Paul Jackson say that, um, that spirit, I'm going to get this right, uh, that that spirit comes into a wounded mindset, develops a wounded mindset in an early age in children to be a victim. And that, that and I saw victimhood mm -hmm. in me. And I, I just, it was awful. It's just this form of I'm having narcissism, flashbacks. <laughs> this form of narcissism that becomes a victim. Yeah. And then the victim is operating in narcissistic behavior and not realizing it and wounded by some other narcissist, maybe, but that woundedness. And so who's going to have woundedness in their emotions more than faith people who have said by the direction of the Lord, learning to walk by the word and not how you feel, which is great. Yeah. But not great if you're just letting Satan collect trash in a living home in your mind, will, your emotions for that spirit. Is that an answer? That is. And it's also, a hook. It, well, it's a hook. And then also, too, you notice that we want to, the, the observation of it is, is we have to have a controlled environment and everything. And we have a solution and an answer that is a man-made answer, you know, where it's a works-oriented performance. If I only perform better, I have to tell you, when I was a little girl, I broke, I broke this wrist. It's supposed to go like this, and it goes like that. And I got to the library, because I would have to go with somebody that helped me before I became ambidextrous. I can write with both hands. And I found a book. It was called Future Miss Perfect. Oh. I thought, if I just study this book enough, the Lord knew what was going to happen with my life. My life has been so far from that, Kelly. Mm -hmm. It's like everything, I, I just had, I had a lot of stuff, as you know, you know? And so we want to go into a sterile environment where we know what to expect every week on cue. You know what? Holy Spirit doesn't operate that way. Mm -hmm. If we're really going to church, you know, 
He could get wrecked. The whole service could totally be his. You know? Because he may have one person out in the congregation that needs some help. And, oh, the judgment. That you did the judgment move me. And it was for just one person. Yeah. Because that's how he operates. But we've got to be willing to give up of ourself. And like you said earlier, our reputation and our plan, because we have a plan with God, how we're going to be used. I'm going to tell you something. (laughs) His plan, it could be so off the charts, exciting and messy. And you got to go with the flow and you got to get new skill sets because all he's looking for, he's not looking for perfect He's not looking for well-trained. He's looking for, here am I, Lord, yeah. send me. I feel like one of the greatest challenges we have in this season are the unexpected things that are happening now. It didn't seem like those happened in the past. Unexpected, what feels like a failure, a faith. Someone in COVID, not like many people passed, that we people were like, I, I was in faith or what happened? It's shocking. Yeah. You know, people with their, their spouses are gone or things, this happened, this happened, this happened. And in this shift, there's a lot of people that have gotten caught in the shift into where we're going. I, be, I think that's how I see it. But how do you, in, the, in faith, in the strength that has been born in you, we don't want to leave where we were planted. We just want to grow in these other areas. Right. But how do people in a moment like that, where it feels like a big disappointment or you, it looks like everything is broken. Talk us into the next step to face the future to grow. Very easy with God. What you do for starters is, is you start talking about this is where I am, whether I've chosen it or not. And I, I can't go back three seconds. I can't go back three seconds and fix what happened because it's done. It could be I had a son commit suicide, for instance. So I have got to accept where I am now. And my first response was looking at my children. How can I help them? So I thought about other people. Then I had to get an attitude of, I am so grateful, Lord, that you gave him to me. I am so grateful I had him for 25 years. I am so grateful that I made sure he went to church and was in her super kids and he was saved and spirit filled. And so I know no matter how he acted out at the end, I know my God and I know he's in heaven and I know I'll see him for eternity. And that's the problem with a lot of people don't have a really good a really good understanding. If you really believed in God, then you know where you're going. And it gets me so mad when somebody departs this earth and gets promoted. They're not lost. I didn't lose anybody. I know where he is. And it's not like, well, he was so this. No, he is so that. He just continued on on his new assignment. And so I look for, and we have to have We have to start looking ahead, get a goal with God that is so big that you need him. Stay. You can't, you can't figure out why you don't know why you will never, you wait. Maybe when you get to heaven, you will. So be grateful, forget the past, be grateful for it, accept your now, ask God to heal you where you're at, look to help others. And get a goal for God because of the experience you've gone through, something huge you're going to do for him because of the experience that you had. You know, there's so many of you right now listening to Terry and you're thinking, wow, I looked at her life. I had no idea that happened to her son or I had no idea she's been through this or that. There's no sign of that on her. But you know what? There is a sign of the Lord Jesus's healing on her. That's what you see. That's why it seems like that couldn't have ever happened. And the Lord is here to heal your life. Our very weaknesses. See, what, we've, we, what we're here talking about today with my, my friend, we're here to talk to you about what God wants to do from today. 
what he was wanting to do from the very beginning. And now Satan has set you up, just like he set Jesus up on the cross for what Jesus was called to do. Really, this will propel you in what you're called to do. And I, I want to encourage you to look fully into his face. Cry your tears and cry them out to him. I, I don't like to cry alone. I don't cry. I used to just not cry. I tried not to because I didn't think I was supposed to. But now I realize, hey, it's in there and it needs to come out. And there's one Savior that is ready for your tears. Paid the price to heal you. In the mo even in the tears, he's collecting every tear. He is near the broken hearted. And so Terry and I just gather together today to tell you, you're on a new road today, no matter what has happened. And even maybe you're sitting here listening to Terry, and maybe the thought of suicide has occurred to you. And I'm telling you, why take your life when Jesus is just waiting to take it and do something with it from today? Terry, just pray us out here. Please. So we thank you, Father God. One of the biggest problems we have right now is we have identity crisis so I thank you, Father. Thank you. Everyone that is on this planet has a big purpose. They are loved. I, Lord, do not let deception hit them. We thank you, Lord, that that veil of deception, that curse, the people that are being hit the hardest have got the biggest call. Lord, send people around them to deliver their thought life, to be there and give them a hug, and you be that one. You be that one that encourages people and lets them know, we can't do this without you. We need you. So you remember that, and we, if Kelly and I can walk through some of the things we walk through, you can too. God is an equal opportunity Amen. God, and he wants and had you here listening today because he needs you right now on this planet. In Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. Did you hear that? Jesus is there right with you now. Just say, all right, Lord, I'm yours.